Let's take another look now at quarter modeling. How can we affect the performance? Well, many users, if we go take a look, I've got some other examples here. We've got a project here that I need to start working on. And if I take a look just generically at this highway project, I'm going to open this existing terrain for this project. And it's, it's actually rather big if I take a look. I've got a really big terrain out here with a multitude of triangles. And if I take a look, you know, not too bad. I've got about 17,000 triangles. But one key thing is to understand how quarter models operate. See, quarter models, when they go through end conditions and they do their tests, they're actually counting and checking all the triangles to kind of understand where they exist. And the more table options for your grading that you have, two to ones, four to ones, six to ones, etc., each one of those has to check and understand where it sits in space on that surface, zeroing in on that triangle. So if we reduce the number of triangles, we can effectively increase the speed of the quarter model. So let's go ahead and take a look here. So I've got a big project, and on this project, I've got this quarter for London Road that Scott has, has graciously put together for me. And so he's gone ahead and done this, but I've got to continue taking over the, the task here. And so on my project here, I've got data that stretches out along this uh, portion of the road. And all the grading we see in my 3D file here is, is governed by a particular surface. So let me fit my view there for you. So there we go, move that out of the way. So all of this is being governed by a terrain. So how can I optimize the performance of my quarter model without having it you know, look at all of the various terrains that are out there. Go ahead and detach that for a moment. So here I have this terrain existing that I was using, and that's just way too many triangles. I'm working within a small corridor, no pun intended. So let's go ahead and visit an opportunity here, because I know about terrain rules and relationships, and I want to empower, you know, the, uh, the, the modeling for the team to be faster. I want to make sure that users can do things much faster. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is establish a brand new file. So if I come over here, I'm going to go and create a new file. Now I've also created a new file here. In this case, I'm going to call it my terrain existing London Road, but it's clip. See, what I'm going to do is use the quarter model to clip against that terrain. And I know there's rules and relationships here that will allow it to be a single source of truth. When I'm using that surface and survey changes that surface, it'll propagate through to my clip surface. It'll change. And then subsequently, my quarter model will react, but with fewer triangles involved. So as you can see here, I've already gone and done that. I've actually taken a shape. And I'm going to go ahead and delete that for a moment. And so with this particular one, let's just kind of go back through the steps of what I did in order to uh, institute this. So I'll go and get rid of that terrain for the moment. All right. So essentially, here's the quarter model. And I do want to point out these are all references. So if I go and adjust the colors, all I did was create a blank file called terrain existing. London Road, because I may be doing many different quarter models for many different roads. And it's important to kind of, you know, align these with what you're doing in a federated process here. But as I go ahead and do that, I'm just going to come through and maybe I have a CAD standard, but you know what? At the moment, I really just have a need. And the need is I need to do a portion of the road. So I'm just going to define an area of interest that I'll be working with for the moment. And I don't need to be exact. I'm just kind of picking some limits. But certainly, I want you to see for this example, I have a surface, and I talked about this earlier, that has almost 17,000 triangles and just over 8,500 points. Well, when I come through and draw a simple boundary and then go back to my terrain tools and take advantage of my clipping, I can clip the terrain model. Now, I'm going to follow the prompts here, and I'm going to set my symbology for this one today so that I actually do a existing, uh, perhaps, contour. Or I'm going to just choose triangles so we can kind of see the difference between the original terrain and this new clipped one. 
And maybe on this one, I'm going to call it ETC for clipped and let everybody know that this is just the London Road existing terrain clip. And so I'm going to come through and satisfy the prompts, locating the reference, locating the clipping element. And if I have many, I can continue to select more, but I'm going to right click. What kind of parameters for offsets do I have? I'm not going to do any horizontals. The boundary is enough. Same with the vertical. Let's match what the surface is as it is. Now, what am I going to clip? Well, in this case, I'm going to clip the external part of it. I want to keep the inside. And so once I accept, I get a clipped surface. So if we take a look here, we can see that I've got a different surface here within the interior area. So everybody see that. Now, if you're wondering why this is slightly grayed out, everybody notice I was doing a right-click view control earlier and adjusting the colors. Well, that's because if you closely look, in order to maintain common workflows with the different personas, when I do a clipped terrain, in many cases I do it from the perspective of a roadway user. And when they do geometry and corridor and some of the other activities, many of them are in a 2D seed file. Well, I'm using a 2D file in this case, which would seem a bit unnatural, but I want to maintain those, those, you know, those, uh, those things. So I want to consider that type of user. So as I go ahead and do that, the user just simply drew a simple shape in 2D, just like you would in plain old MicroStation. And yet, by way of having the 2D and getting the 3D for free, so to speak, what we were able to do is leverage the idea and the capability of open roads to create that default 3D. So actually, by doing the clipping here, it put that terrain there. So just want to point that out. So that's why when I did view control, it was disappearing because it is, in fact, in a different model for that clipped surface. But one nice advantage here, let's turn those colors back on is that I get new guidance. You know what? It turns out the quarter model needs to be extended. The roadway team's going to extend the geometry. My corridor has to extend. Well, now, because of the compute times, I can manage this a little bit better and simply say, well, we just need more road, more ground. And because of the dynamic relationship of doing a clipped surface, I'm able to get those additional triangles back. So I can control how many triangles the... Uh, quarter model is going to see and calculate against. And because this terrain is ruled to this one, all I need to do is open this clip file to have this miniature surface update. Final design, giving it to my end users, my customers, I'll probably give them this one, of course, but these are my working surfaces. If we take a look at what kind of impact does it have? Well, let's talk about that. If we take a look at the properties here, we can see by selecting this surface, it was this about 17,000 triangles, just under 17. But when I select this one, well, it's just under, you know, 1,800. So I've actually really increased the opportunity for this to perform faster by almost a factor of 10. And so um, definitely an increase in performance. Um, one other tip on the terrains themselves, because of the relationships and the opportunities that they offer uh, for performance, um, it is worth noting you can also deactivate the rule and freeze them, making them even faster. Now, that does not uh, update when the master surface changes. So when that large existing ground surface changes, um, it's not going to propagate through. You as a user will have to come through and activate that, but you'll also increase performance for the quarter model even more so uh, by doing that. So depending on your needs, be aware that controls the performance. So let's take a look at another instance now. So that directly is going to affect our quarter modeling. And of course, I could tell Scott, who maybe was still working on that quarter model, I could say, hey, Scott, you know, rather than use that big surface, because um, you said it was running a little slow as we got to much more complex models that you're working on, let's just simply come over and attach that particular 2D clipping model. So here, I'm going to tell him the name of mine is called Terrain Existing London Road Clipped. He'll go through and attach it, of course, and when he attaches that model, he's going to get that particular uh, clipped surface uh, in his environment. Of course, he could do things like a live nest, and we can see it in the 3D now 
And so now he can use that as his active surface for his corridor modeling to help speed things up. Um, so one nice little tip. And of course, for every, you know, roadway section, you may want to do that. It's really up to you. It's just how you can uh, advance the performance of your modeling. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.